Ishwara creates the objects, Jiva creates a reaction to the objects, an interpretation of the objects. So your experience of life is just your interpretation of life. The Jiva is not experiencing what's actually there. The Jiva is only experiencing its own vasanas. <coughs> this is why it has such a problem. Because its, it's vasanas are distorting reality. Its vasanas are twisting and shaping reality to suit its own conditioning, its own beliefs and opinions. So, so the, the, and the question here, the next, the next question is, well, how to get rid of those projections? Shouldn't we just remove the world? <laughs> you know, since, since, since I'm making projections about the world, why don't we just remove the world? This is the yoga idea. The yoga idea is get rid of your thoughts. Because you, the world is in your mind. If you get rid of the world, if you get rid of your mind, then you get rid of the world. So then you're in samadhi all the time, and then you're happy all the time, because you got no problems, because there's no world for you to deal with. That's the, that's the, the yoga fantasy. Now you can do that. You actually can do that. There's a samadhi where you can actually remove the world. So he says here, um, yoga can temporarily remove the world. The objector he says, the objector, the dualist, he says, if the mind causes bondage by projecting the phenomenal world, the world could be made to disappear by controlling the mind. So, so only yoga needs to be practiced and there's no need for self-knowledge. I mean, that's the argument. And uh, Swami Vidyaranya says, the appearance of the world can temporarily be removed by yoga. But the complete removal of mental projections is not possible without self-knowledge. The next topic, the world remains when you know who you are. Uh, the duality of Ishwara's creation continues once, once, once self-knowledge is firm, but it is known to be a belief, not a fact. Before you gain self-knowledge, you think the world is real. Afterwards, you realize the belief, that the reality of the world is just a belief. You don't take it to be a fact. When duality, when duality disappears at the time of the dissolution of the world through yoga, awareness remains unknown because there is no teacher and no scripture to inform the yogi of his nature as awareness. So you remove the world, you're removing the jiva too, aren't you? Because the jiva is part of the world. Isn't it? The world is Ishwara and Jiva. That's what the world is. Right? So when you remove the world, you remove Jiva. That's called Nirvikalpa Samadhi. And what? And since you're not there in that Samadhi, since you're part of the world, you're not there, then how are you going to know your awareness when you wake up? You're there as awareness, but awareness knows what it is. So it doesn't need self-knowledge, does it? You need self-knowledge when you come out of the samadhi, but since you weren't there in the samadhi to get self-knowledge of awareness, then what? You come out of self-knowledge thinking you're a jiva again. You don't come out of the, I mean, you come out of the samadhi thinking you're a jiva again. You don't realize that you're awareness. So you haven't solved the problem by removing the projections by yoga, by action. Yoga is an action, a meditation a state of mind that you get yourself into. You can do it. I, I had a friend that uh, gained self-knowledge at, 
he was a yogi and, and uh, he could remove the world. And, uh, and, uh, but he, he and, I, it, and I pointed out to him that, that by removing the world, he didn't remove himself. And suddenly the lights went on. He realized, I'm present without my mind, without the world. Mm -hmm. And then he realized who he was. So yoga's good, you know, if you get teaching. But you need to get a teaching. But usually in yoga, they just leave you alone. They just say, it's up to you now. You're a doer, and you've got to get rid of the world. So you have to practice this samadhi. They don't tell you you're the self. If they told you you're the self, you wouldn't need to remove the world, would you? Because the world's not a problem for the self, is it? The world's mitya, and I'm satya, so the world doesn't affect me, remember? Self is unaffected by the world, so why do I have to remove it? There's no need to remove it. Self, the world is mitya, and I'm satya. Satya is unaffected by the world. The chair is unaf the, the wood is unaffected by the chair, isn't it? The world has the same status as the chair has to the wood, same relationship to the world has the same relationship to the self that the chair has to the wood. By removing the chair, I haven't changed the wood at all. So by removing my mind, I haven't changed myself at all, have I? I'm still there. I'm still me. So there's no need to remove the world. So he says here, the, the world remains when you know who they are, who you are. The world is uh, 42. The world of duality created by Ishwara. Now, this is an important point. I made it earlier today, and, and, I'll, and I'll, uh, we'll make it again. The world of duality created by Ishwara is an L aid. It's a help. It's not an obstacle to non-dual wisdom. <laughs> hmm? See? It's, it, you look at it differently. Don't think the world is a problem. Most of us spiritual people are running away from the world. We, we think it's a problem. It's not a problem, it's a help. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It directs our... Yeah, if you understand this teaching, all you have to do is turn your attention away from the object, back to the subject, and boom, you're right there. 